What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of my Hungarian Let's Play uh, where we just took uh, manufacturing from Lithuania to help us with manufacturing the way that it spreads into our country but also uh, we have expanded into Africa as well and uh, feeling good, feeling good. So another move that I want to be doing here is expanding into the Livonian order but I also want to be breaking my alliance with Bremen, now that Bremen is Catholic. As we should be able to acquire his vote for revoke, as long as we improve relations, etc. Without actually using the Diplo slot there. So I'm kind of looking at who else. It looks like Holland and Brabant, perhaps we could gain their votes. If we allied them and got really, really close and cuddly with them, we could... Ah, uh, their votes. I mean that we could uh, enforce religion on them, perhaps. And there's once again peace inside the Empire, getting 0 0.13 Imperial Authority. It's something, man. It's something. Speaking of which, we have Prestige, which means we should be able to release another member of the Empire. And where should we be doing that? Oh, some of the cores actually disappearing, eh? Ah, yeah. Actually, Chernov, or whatever they're called, uh, only just disappeared. Ah, that's a shame. Because I think last episode they were there. But of course we can release Kiev. And I think as a uh, five development province, it's going to be just fine to release there. I should always keep a lookout of how close they are. So he's got a militarist leader. He's not going to be wanting to join the Empire. Um, we're running out of sort of options. We can release Circassia. And also uh, this, this nation as well. But we need the prestige to do such. Alrighty, so we're going to be coring up this episode. Um, also, I might as well attack the Livonian Order. But I think that's going to cause, yeah, the Empire to be at war. What a shame. Ravensburg. Ah, Ravensburg is a heretic, so we can do it through war. That doesn't upset uh, Prussia. We can make him Catholic through war. Riga, Milan, so it's Holland. Holland and uh, Milan I'd like to break relations with. So I think maybe, maybe Holland, if we ally him... If we improve relations, etc., we can actually get him as an ally and maybe break his relations with the Livonian Order and then enforce religion on him at a later date. That'd be cool. Bremen is already converting some of his territory up to Catholic, to be Catholic, which is uh, very good. Because I hate it, guys. I really hate it. I've done it in the past where you force somebody to go a different religion. And then they actually end up um, kind of switching back. It's just brutal. So let's do some guarantees, etc. Over... Holland to try to acquire them as an ally. Only making zero point, well, only making 10 ducats. It's not so much, but I think at the moment we can turn our army maintenance down actually, which is something I haven't done a lot of in the past. Oh, you know what? Although I operated with such a small stack here in Africa, guys, I think the, unfortunately, the revolt will be way more massive. It's just how this game works. It's a shame. Yeah, look at that. 41k. <laughs> it's like, this this nation only has like, you know, what do they have? Like 8k, because they're so poor. You conquer them, and then there's like 41,000 revolt. My goodness. So I'm, I'm going to have to get some more units out there for sure. Uh, whether it means building them or transporting them. Oh my goodness, that's a big stack. 
that's a mighty big stack. Let's just try to build infantry out here as they are the best uh, at being economic, cheaper, the cheapest. I realized that the last episode, guys, was slightly shorter than I would have liked it to be. Uh, because of my big break, I'm actually worse at judging the time as well that I've been recording, so forgive me for that. A lot of people requested initially that these uh, episodes, they'd like them to be only about 20 minutes. Uh, whereas they're all essentially longer than that. So I'm improving relations with Catalonia, and I'm hoping that, yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to be a free city inside the Empire. That's going to help us out with our Imperial Authority, which is very good. And we have 10 Prestige. So, who are we going to release? I think uh, these nations inside the Empire. One thing I'm taking into consideration when I release a nation, guys, is um, we don't have military access. So that's why I'm, I did him instead of Circassia. Let's get rid of our fort here now that we, we actually seem stable out here. And it's only it's only a rank 2 fort. Destroy castle. Yeah, so he has a militarist ruler, but any nation that we have the core on is, is not so good and easy to uh, make them a free city. Alright, I'm going to move this 23 stack down to Africa, and that should be enough to defend against that appalling revolt that isn't coming from there. And now I'm hoping that we can break Holland's relations with the Livonian Order. Oh my god, did I misjudge that? Hmm... Oh, there's another thing, guys, that you everybody's been suggesting that I, I'm trying to force this court and country disaster. Um, I'll, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm really hesitant to do it. I'm really, really hesitant to do that. Uh, I, apparently, that if you, if you overcome it, if you trigger this and overcome it, you get 20 max absolutism. That's what I've heard, which obviously is extremely uh, nice. However, most disasters are really horrible to go through, from my experience. Uh, yeah, let's enforce religion on Holland while we can. That definitely worked, which is really good. And I think we'll just switch Melt for uh, Brabant now. But we've got to keep an eye on Prussia. Prussia doesn't like the enforcing religious unity. So make sure our relations are good with him is what I'm trying to say. So that worked. Now we declare on Livonian order. We're at war with Holland. But he's he is um, Catholic. Yep. Alrighty. So the thing about the court and country, guys. Um, we're pretty fragile. We're pretty fragile. Like we're, we're not at being risk. We're not at risk of being attacked or anything like that. But with the amount of uh, revolts and so on, uh, our economy, we're pretty fragile. And you know, being a noob to this kind of uh, era of the game, like I haven't played the late game very often at all. Uh, I kind of just don't want to do it. Like I don't know how else to say it. Um, a lot of people might think I'm really bad for doing that because it, the advantage of doing it is that it's going to massively kind of close the gap of how difficult it is ultimately going to be to actually gobble up the entire world. Uh, but I'm more concerned about going into unknown territory that I haven't been before, like when everything else is on the line uh, and I'm not in a comfortable spot to do it. I know that we can get 10, I think, more from government type. We can get five from this government type, but I think a, another government type that is unlocked at a later date can give us up to ten, is my understanding. Uh, um, and 
is there another way? I think there's another way to get a little bit as well, right? I'm looking forward to getting this yearly admin efficiency of plus 5% admin efficiency is what I mean to say. Um, yeah, I really want to be building universities as well. Universities do something. Remind me in the in the chat, guys, in the comments. Remind me. Somebody told me to sp spam build universities, which I really want to do, but we're too poor to do. And that's why I'm trying to keep our economy in the positive to kind of uh, pay things off. So let's quickly grab Brabant as an ally. And then we're going to go to war against the Livonian Order. And once I have these troops down here, we're going to go to war against uh, Noop. And fully annex him, including his manufactory, which is going to help us, obviously, with the spread of manufactories. He's actually already accepted manufactories by the looks of things. Which is going to give us his whole little area and help it uh, spread much earlier. So that's definitely going to be a good move, helping us embrace manufactories sooner. Uh, I just want to say that, guys, like... In hindsight, if I'd played Hungary before and I knew about the Black Army, uh, I would have totally cancelled the Black Army sooner, if you guys feel what I'm saying. And we'd be in much more better economic shape if I had done that, but it is what it is. Remove Poland from the map. I would like to do that. Is he guaranteed? Oh, no way. What? Prussia's guaranteeing him. Yeah. The way I would have to do it is through Lithuania. Ah, they broke alliances, though, for some reason. Um, I think we could probably do that by calling Prussia into war at some point in the manpower recovery and the prestige. That's at least a mission we can complete. Let's do that. A lot of people had been giving me the criticism throughout my uh, previous episodes that I should be taking wars and, um, uh, excuse me, not taking the wars that I have been and I should just be licking my wounds and recovering my economy instead of actually doing what I have been doing. Whereas, of course, I made the decision to, ah, oh, I should be rushing for Ravensburg. Yeah, I totally should be doing that. God dang it. I don't have enough troops. We're operating on such few numbers. So let's actually turn the speed up, I guess. Yeah, I'm more worried about closing the gap, guys, between the amount of provinces it's going to take or not to actually get that one face. Even though I know there's massive merits, especially if it's going to cost us like negative 5, negative 10%. There are massive merits to just chilling out and taking up, etc. But I feel much more comfortable with each episode or so. We can take a big chunk of land, like this African land. It makes me feel much safer as we close the gap. The amount of land that it requires to essentially win the game. Oh, you know what? I just made a bloody mistake, didn't I? Because my allies won't back me up. Urgh, when I'm fighting another war. Alright, we're going to be doing one war at a time. Ah. So I say mistake, but it's... It was a mistake, but it's just not very costly. It's a thing, thankfully. Also, guys, keep in mind that we... Yay! Our first thing that we can unlock, because we finally got enough Splendor. So I really couldn't decide if I wanted the 5 admin efficiency or the yearly absolutism. I think the yearly absolutism is the way to go, as it's just so low. Uh, it's going to take a long time before we get that admin efficiency, though, which is bloody good. So I really want that as well. And it uh, looks like maybe potential for a large army is going to be the sooner one that we achieve before anything else. Which is uh, kind of 
a sad fact. I also, uh, we have colonists, remember guys, we got one going down here. So perhaps if I can maybe colonize like Hawaii or something, we can, uh, yeah, get access to having three trading companies. They don't need to be successful big trading companies. They just need to be trading companies, period. But uh, that's nice to get. It's nice to get. We're now getting like 1.1 yearly absolutism, which means it just goes up. Speaking of absolutism, I think we are still ahead enough to strengthen the government some more. Spending 100 military, but that's what it's there for, man. Monarch points are to, to win the games. Uh, we have some diplomats free, so... Should probably be trying to utilize them. We can force religious unity on Brabant now. Yeah, so the next nation is going to be Lebec that we want to ally and enforce religious unity. This enforcing religious unity is definitely helping our imperial authority, and that was the intention. The issue, however, is that um, it's pissing off Prussia more and more. And uh, we're ultimately going to want about 100, uh, 200 rather, relations with him, maxed relations to try to acquire his vote. So I, I do need to chill a little bit. But boy, it looks good to kind of be eliminating the uh, Protestants. I think it looks good, it feels good. A lot of people have been criticizing me, guys. <laughs> like, I, I sent haters last episode, or the episode before, rather. Um, I don't really have haters. Like, that's the wrong term to be using. Uh, just fair critics, I would say. It's just, the nature of the internet is quite funny, because it could be literally anything. Like, say I, I say literally anything about anything at all. Um, oh, we're not quarrying these provinces while I fight this war. A little mistake there. Just three provinces, that's okay. Um, like, it could be anything like politics is a good example. You say something which, you know, you just brush over and take for granted in order to make another statement. You know, it's, it's a little uh, insignificant thing about the statement that you're making. And then, of course, that's going to irritate the people who actually know about that subject, you know? So it's kind of the nature of the internet where you have a large amount of people. I can say something really nonchalant. Just go over it. And uh, it actually compels the person who actually knows that I'm wrong or mistaken on that one little thing to actually speak up. Whereas most people, they don't speak up, if that makes any sense at all. And that's why I think there's a kind of inherent... Uh, a lot of people say like it's toxic, toxic, like comments are like toxic and stuff. And I think it's for that reason. Like, I don't think it's exactly toxic, but it, it's for that reason, in my opinion. And with that in mind, like, I think my chat is really good, which I think is pretty typical of, uh, the YouTube channel I'm talking about, which is pretty typical of a smaller channel. I think like you guys are awesome. Uh, when I say haters, I do have like a couple haters who actively dislike my videos. Uh, I don't really know why I... I think it's because they're overly sensitive, actually. But um, I did use the term haters to just talk, refer to uh, those of you who have been giving me, like, criticism because uh, of the pressure and stuff. I don't actually view you guys to be haters, so I just wanted to clarify that. All right, we're doing perfectly fine on overextension here. Uh, yeah, like, some people have been saying, like, I'm dyslexic and stuff like that. Dys dyslexic. I, which I can't even say. Um, I don't think I suffer from dyx dyslexia. I think I uh, suffer from uh, dropped out of school at 15 year old dear. That's what I think I suffer from. Or as we say in the industry, ignorance. I think I suffer from being ignorant. Seriously, I take stuff like... I'm really lighthearted about things, but... um. I'll tell you what, guys, like, some of the really retarded things I say when I don't talk properly and stuff, it makes me laugh when I view it back in editing on, like, facepalm. But the to kind of make you guys understand, if you can, the reason I say really funny things that don't make any sense at all sometimes is because uh, I have a lot going on in my mind. Like, when you try to commentate in this game, it's not easy. Uh, 
I don't consider this to be work because it's not like really physically demanding and that's the kind of work that I have done in the past but it is difficult in other ways no what the fr Anna no Anna hang on I don't think we need to pass this we inherit it anyway phew I think we're good we inherit it anyway we are the sole dude elected dude we, we have a female heir, but it, it's no consequence, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> um, try to clarify that in chat for me, guys, in the YouTube channel, but I'm pretty confident that we get elected even without passing the Pragmatic Sanction. Um, by the way, Anna. Beautiful Hungarian name. Uh, I have a sister called Anna. And uh, as a Hungarian, we do have just straight-up objectively superior genes. So, emphasis on the word. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I saying, guys? When you commentate, it's difficult, man. Like, what happens is you, you're talking about something and you have other things on your mind that you want to say down the line and then these events and so on, like the nature of the you thought you get interrupted and it gets to a point where you're just kind of talking because you want to finish your point but your mouth is just running and you're, you're not even interested in what you're saying anymore. You just feel obligated to finish your point. Does that make any sense? I'm not sure that makes any sense. But one less West African nation, guys. We did it. And I'm going a little bit crazy here because we, uh, shoot, I did spend some diplomatic points. i got to be really careful with that. I don't want, we don't want to be doing that if I can avoid it. I think I spent like 75. No. Uh, we need to do something here like influence him to get good relations. Yep, we're just about there, so I'll just guarantee him for now. And then, one more free city. Uh, I'm going a little bit ham here, guys, because of the sheer amount of troops that I need to actually deal with the revolt. So we might as well focus on this area a bit, you know? That's my sort of kind of thought process. If we're going to have troops here, I might as well be taking out these nations. But, of course... Uh oh that's 50 overextension. Don't go crazy. No, we're good, we're good. We're good. Of course, we just acquired a manufactory and some land, some acceptance. So that's good. That's going to help us um, accept that eventually because these are going to be spreading as they are neighboring uh, quite quickly. Uh, assuming they have some development, actually very slowly, huh? Because they're all such low development. There, that's quite quick. Well, it's better than nothing, but I will make sure to continue looking out for neighbors if they do build manufactories, because every little bit helps, I think. It's going to take a while for that to spread, and every little bit helps. Calling up these un-territoried, uh, un-area territoried, however you say, stated land, really, really cheap here, man, in Africa, which is a good... And uh, our power projection is a concern, eh, guys? We should, uh, like, insult France. Try to keep it up as we go. And it is time to start another war. So let's call on Bohemia. How are our favors doing with Prussia? Got tons of Bohemia, so let's do Bohemia. He should be enough, I suggest. Yep. And this war is going to uh, allow us to force religion on Ravensburg. I can't just call Prussia Erna. We, we don't exactly need him, right? I'll see how we feel because we've only got 24. I might call Prussia in as well. We don't exactly need his him to help us in any other regard. What the? Why did that decrease all of a sudden? No. It was at 50. What happened? Oh my god, this is like a nightmare trying to acquire. <sighs> let's do that for now. If we're going to use a deploy relation, let's transfer power. I and mean, we're about to be 200 relations. Are you kidding me, game? It was the overextension, wasn't it? Alright, let's fish for deploy reputation. Deploy reputation will help us with that, I think. It's the overextension there that made that change a little bit. I think. Oh, I, sh I could have also released Circassia. 
as a member of the Empire, something else we should be doing. There it is. We've is. I've been wanting that for a while. Yay! Okay, there's another free city. I'm staying out Ravensburg here because he's about to declare war. Right? Or join the war. Oh my god, Fort Level 5. Brutal. Yeah. In order to be as economical as possible, I'm just going to call Prussia in. That's going to really, you know, you know, his massive stack is just going to make short work of these guys, I suggest, I hope. And Ravensburg finally joined the war. Alrighty. I hate the mid to late game uh, forts, especially in Europe. Absolutely brutal. Brutal stuff. They take ages to siege. Now, we do have Holy War CB here, guys, against Kassinji. I have no idea how to say that. Uh, which, yeah, would increase our influence on the Ivory Coast as well. But uh, I really want to start uh, working on Milan, if possible. Indeedy. Milan? M Mali, rather. He's got a lot of troops, though. It's an issue. We'd need more. It's it's a bit of a shame, guys, that I consider 50,000 to be a lot of troops, you know, 57,000. Uh, but, you know, as we pay off these debts, like, as long as we're making profit while we're fighting wars, we're overextended. Uh, that feels good. As we pay off the debt... Uh-oh, the Empire's at war, of course. It's the war we're fighting, you noob. Oh, my goodness. Fleur! <laughs> God damn it! He needs to be at least 10 development! Ah. Oh! Man, I can just like never. I've been intentionally releasing small sized cities, and uh, yeah, that, that's uh, whatever. Ah, oh, that's so irritating. I'm not even gonna bother like explaining the situation there, guys. It needs to be development, tend to be a free city, so uh, perhaps given time, it will just reach that point of 10 development. We've got three stability, which is perfect, so we're going to go for the tax from the Pope, which helps out our economy. That's over five ducats a month, by the looks of things. Really good. Slowly getting there with the the loans, I guess. I don't know. And uh, I'm just generally improving relations with factions. Uh, Protestants inside the Empire. So it looks like Great Britain... What the hell? It's getting ravaged by rebels, but they're just noble rebels. Uh, Great Britain is the only nation that would really help us against France, by the looks of things. Uh, Persia is somebody we want to attack. Like, he would help us against the Ottomans, but we want to attack. And nobody, really. Who is this? This North Indian. Okay. Alright. This North Indian would help us against Persia, Bahamas, and Ming. We should consider actually allying that guy, guys. And kind of eliminating him last. That North Indian is pretty strategically well located to uh, help us out. Shoot, I should also be fabricating on Lithuania, obviously. Let's get some claims. Okay, your legitimacy is the highest. So when our legitimacy actually reduces, that's our best chance to uh, strengthen government. And I don't want to be doing any harsh treatment when that costs more than 50 military power, if we can avoid it. We are now gaining absolutism per month, which is really cool. Stop influencing these nations. Um, I want to uh, go take out Milan. I don't have access there. Okay. We'll just let him siege Venice. That's alright.
put in our machineries to work. Which is good. So those of you who know about the new kind of dynamic with absolutism and so on, guys. Uh, take into consideration, I mean, I'll do it if you guys insist. But we need 50 absolutism to, to for this to occur anyway. But consider that I don't think I want to do that. Um, yeah, tell me, tell me if... Uh, are we doing it, guys? Is it possible? Are we winning? That's what I want to know. Are we winning? Obviously, we're going to go for the revoke, which is going to help us uh, crush France. It's one less heretic. Good stuff. And uh, I'm going to try to like fully annex Castile and Portugal if they come below like Castile is almost fully annexable already uh, let alone we don't have admin efficiency and so on and that obviously gives us his colonies same goes for Portugal would take like two wars and his colonies are not so crazy that they would fight independence wars if we uh, defeated him uh, so that's obviously my intention we still honestly have enough time to potentially PU more than just Sweden but Sweden should be fairly easily PU'd, which is cool. So keep in mind, we're going to try to annex Castile and Portugal and get their colonies. We should be able to get the uh, PU over Sweden and integrate him before the end of the game, no problem. We're going to try to use the Revoke to essentially smash France and perhaps even Great Britain uh, to some extent, some of this higher developed area to avoid coring it up. And uh, yeah, we basically have, we've taken a big chunk of Africa, but we've got a lot of Africa to go in all of Asia. What do you guys think? We're, we're overcoming the economy? Definitely tell me how, if you think we can do it or not. I kind of think with my, my mind, uh, the way I know that, uh, you know, how the game works, how much you can achieve in the late game, I kind of think we can do it for sure. Uh, considering that even though we're not doing the best in absolutism, we have the uh, the golden age guys, which reduces all power costs by ten percent. That includes coring, and uh, I just think that yeah, with my own kind of previous experience. Uh oh, Livonians have four shock. He's behind us in tech, but I think we should get off. Even though our morale's low, we should get off Brescia, the hills. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to be ending the episode here, guys, uh, in the middle of this war, because it's going to take a little while. But uh, tell me what you think. How are we doing on pacing? I think we're doing okay. I really want to peace out Holland, but we're about to take his capital, so that should... Uh, we should be able to peace him out quickly, and I'm focusing on... Oh, God, this, this event. Focusing on Milan myself to get the Imperial Authority going up with the peace once again. But as we are enforcing religion like this, guys, we, we're gaining a, a pretty decent amount. And uh, I'm actually going to re-roll this mission because we might get a better one. Okay, that's just the one province of Bender. That's fine. Get the uh, loyalty, which helps us with our army maintenance. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next episode. Where our truce with... Yeah, the Ottomans are coming up. So it is time, it seems, to redeem myself and uh, try to declare on the Ottomans once again next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you then.